How's it going out there? It's December 15th. I'm Frank Kersey, host of the Wall Street Upload Podcast, where I break down the headlines and uh, you know the rest. Tell you what's really moving these markets. And moving these markets, man, major, major moves right now. I mean, meme stocks getting nailed. We have inflation running wild. Crypto extremely volatile, especially as we have a bunch of CEOs from top companies uh, talking to Hill Congress. And, of course, we had the Fed meeting. They break all this down with us. Let's bring in Daniel Crete, Senior Research Analyst, Curzon Research. Daniel, what's going on, man? Frank, what's happening? Another another great day. Got a, Yeah, got a lot. Pfizer news, more again. Mm-hmm. Uh, variant news, more and again. <laughs> this is like a Groundhog Day. But it is Christmas season. I got to ask you real quick. Does your neighborhood do anything fun to uh, spread the Christmas joy or anything? We have very few houses that, that you know put lights up I and mean, we're in like an older community i'm glad i'm moving to jacksonville again because i don't mind being an older community but a lot of these people are grumpy they don't wave they don't like us for some reason i don't know anyway but uh you know so that you don't see lots of lights but there are certain neighborhoods and and you know they have really nice thing downtown dickens on, on main street which is really cool for the kids that was a lot of fun and some blocks really like go crazy with lights and you know we'll be able to drive through there and stuff which is really cool though what about you yeah no i'm a terrible neighbor i don't do a whole lot of decorating <laughs> plus i go to ohio for uh, i'll be in ohio as well for christmas um i say all that because did you see you know these ugly sweater ugly mm-hmm. christmas sweater parties yep there's one out there making the news somebody's asking forty thousand dollars for an ugly sweater did i get it yet or no no <laughs> Well, it depends on. I haven't seen my bonus. And that's yet not an NFT. Year. It's a real sweater, right? That's a real yeah. sweater. Yeah. NFT. Yeah. No, it's a it's a real sweater. So that's pretty hilarious. But uh, it made me when I read that or saw those headlines, I thought about um, you know the meme stocks we see, little to no profits with crazy valuations, the cryptocurrencies like Dogecoin uh, that you point to, and you know how the hell is this not like a, a sign of the tops when you're when you're dropping this? But anyway, it's a little little Christmas fun there for everybody. No, nah, that's cool. I wish I would do more. I mean, it's been really busy. You know, we're about to launch our token uh, hopefully in a couple of weeks, uh, and it might be a little bit before uh, the new year or into the new year. So we're just you know finalizing a few things, which is really really exciting. But just you know finishing the year really really strong, and it's been really really nuts uh, for me. So. Uh, my team's been working incredibly hard. Uh, Dion, I don't know if I told you this, but but the follow the last week from the 27th to the 31st, I'm closing. I'm going to give everybody my company off. So uh, um, I'm still going to be on social media platforms. I'm still going to be talking to TikTok. TikTok, we have a couple things go viral now. I mean, 400,000 people uh, watching a couple of these things. We're taking little clips from from our podcast and putting it on there. And that's you know, one of the best platforms right now. I mean, you're looking at, at Twitter and Instagram, Facebook, a lot of these platforms saturated. We're getting a lot, a lot of traction. Uh, so we're going to be going live for the Consumer Electronics Show. So I'll be posting stuff like during that week on social media through TikTok and through through Twitter. But uh, the live stuff's going to go through TikTok, and we're going to post a lot of that stuff and put in reports and, and just you know tell you what, what the best stocks are and ideas, which I always find really, really good ideas. In 2019, one of my favorite ideas was was Kodak at two dollars, and it went to double digits. Uh, it's weird. I said, I'm going to tell you Kodak. I'm like, insiders are buying, which I was surprised to see. I don't know why, but they have a very big presence here. Uh, and sure enough, that thing really, really took off. And I know they got to deal with, with, you know, through Trump and stuff like that, whatever it was. But, you know, you saw it coming and, and just little things like that that you see. We have the media badge, which yeah, I'm going there on a the 4th. I'm going to be broadcasting. It's a, it's a media day only, which I'm going to have special access thanks to you guys because it's I'm under influencer and stuff like that and, and, and industry analyst. Uh, then Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, uh, going to be taping a lot of stuff. It's going to be a lot of fun. We've I've done this every single year for I think the last eight or nine Outside of last year, which it was close to COVID, but lots, lots of fun. So I'll be posting that week. Daniel, you will have off. Everybody have off. Uh, and that's going to be the last week. Just to let you know, we're not going to do any podcasts or anything, but my team's really worked their ass off and they deserve it. So I just want to make sure that they have that week off and have some fun, spend time with their families. And again, if you have any customer service, that part is going to be open, but uh, and feel free to give me a shout. But uh, anyway, Daniel, let's go over the most important thing, which we're taping before the Fed's actually going to speak and Powell's going to speak, right? So a little bit before. So we, which I'm setting that up, Daniel, so we can't mess up, but it, it, it's cool because I like making forecasts. I don't think you're going to say anything crazy, right? They already announced that we're going to tape. Tapering is going to be uh, double what was expected and we're going to raise rates. But I do want to talk about some of these reports like Goldman Sachs because Goldman Sachs is expecting a lot more rate hikes than I think people uh, 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 think. And I want to break that down. But, you know, what are your thoughts on this? I don't know if it's factored in. They're predicting three. I'm predicting at least four next year or, you know, not just a 25 basis point raise, maybe a 50 basis point raise because they're extremely nervous about inflation. We saw that with Powell do a complete 180. You don't see that often. The Fed over the past 10 years, its credit crisis has done, I wouldn't say, you know, 
a great job, but they really do a good job of telling you what they're going to do months ahead. This way, don't surprise the markets. That was a major surprise in November, Powell. You know, that was a major shift. No one said, oh, we're going to raise rates a lot quicker. And that, that wasn't on the table. We saw that that's where the markets reacted. You know, what are your thoughts? I'm thinking that it's going to be more than that, at least four hikes. You're thinking differently, right? I can't, I can't go to four. It's hard to go against Goldman with three just because they're the most wonderful, terrible people on Wall Street. Um, I only say I would take the under so we can have a fun beer bet on that, Frank. So you got over three to four. I got three at the most. I would say two. And only because I don't believe that they are as independent as they claim. I don't believe that they don't pay attention to asset prices and they want to help that or help manage those. You are talking about the entity that thinks that they can control uh, the economy, which is a group of which is individuals making decisions on a random basis for the betterment of themselves. So good luck with that, which is why they're so terrible at it. Uh, they do have a lot of influence though. So no, I think that if they start, if they, as they uh, scale back on the bond buying, as interest rates start to rise, as they hike them, I think that'll cause volatility like everybody's expecting. I just think that they'll uh, man- try to manage that and they'll, they'll give investors, quote unquote, uh, more of the niceness or what they want to, to say, hey, we're still here for you and not take away the punch bowl. I'm not saying I agree with that necessarily. I just think that that's how that's going to play out. As far as uh, the meeting coming up, I don't think he's going to do anything crazy back to back because it was the most recent, right? All these Fed meetings run together. Did he do the 180 on the on the last public this one? This is, yeah. So when he spoke, uh, yeah. When he retired, like November transitory. 30th, I think, like the end of November. So this is about two, three weeks ago, two weeks ago. So um, if he did yeah. give any clarity on the, um, amount of rate hike, like you said, instead of 25 basis points, maybe raising it a half. Not, that they, would be you said great. they're going to raise sooner. Yeah. But, they, but know, that would be the, the only thing I think would be really good to see. But, well, yeah. you know. And the tapering, right? So we have the tapering here, which in November, they announced they're going to slowly trim how many bonds it's buying, which was, you know, $15 billion a month, which is really nothing, right? So they were doing just to compare. They're doing $120 billion a month, right? The Fed's been purchasing since June 2020, even though all asset prices were just screaming higher, hitting all-time highs. They kept this in place. And now they said, oh, we're going to taper. We're going to stop buying. Now they said they're going to double that pace. Uh, and if you're looking for rate hikes, uh, you know, Goldman came out saying, you know, they expect three. And they're looking at May at that meeting, uh, July FOMC meeting and November meeting. Uh, they're expecting three rate hikes and then, you know, tapering at a pace of $30 billion a month from November to, which started already, so into February, March. So, you know, you're taking a lot of that you know, excess out of the market. It's creating tighter market conditions. But here's why I disagree with you, Daniel. I mean, we're looking at inflation numbers, which are insane. I mean, we're looking at, at 9% on the PPI, which just came out, fastest pace on record, 7% of the CPI. The highest rate since for 39 years, 70 to 80s. And I, I had my podcast yesterday in monologue, and I was saying that it's not an apples to apples comparison because they, they changed that index 20 times over the past 30 years, the CPI. And just looking at how they calculate it is an absolute joke. And I explained I won't get into the details, but if you're looking at apples to apples comparison, I mean, we're, we're much, much higher than that. Honestly. That's why Powell didn't about face. It's very rare for the Fed to do something like that where they surprise the market. They never want to surprise the markets, and they surprise the markets. Uh, and they're losing credibility because of it, because it's no longer transitory, which they pounded in our head. The media pounded in our head. Yet every one of you listening to this, all of us, we all knew. It, listen, the CPI is not running by seven percent. Okay, it's rising by about 17 percent. If you look at a gasoline price up fifty percent, you're looking at car prices up thirty, forty percent. Used car prices, everything across the board, food, everything that we pay for is is much, 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 much higher. Right. So, so this, these are real costs. Right. These are real costs that we see. Now we have a market, Daniel, where companies are being forced to grow, to see very strong growth every single quarter. If not, with the valuations where they are, then you see DocuSign, 40% now, boom, right away. I'm mean, talking tens of billions of market cap wiped out. You're looking at, at, at how many stocks have we seen that happen to? Even PayPal got nailed. It's down tremendously. You're looking at a lot of these names, especially the high leverage names. You know, if you're not showing that growth, like the Peloton coming out and, and, and reporting those terrible numbers, you get destroyed, which means what? Which means these companies are going to be forced to raise prices. Some of them can, they'll have pricing power, but a lot of them won't, which means we're going to have inflation continue. And where inflation is right now is very, very scary, Dan. I, I don't see it subsiding. The Fed just threw in the towel and said it's not transitory. So for me, I think I might even be conservative on that. Uh, really quick to put this in perspective in case you guys want to know more about this Goldman report. Uh, and I'll highlight this if you're on our YouTube page. So it says, we expect Goldman the, the, to show two hikes in 2022 
which is weird because they're predicting three hikes, but at least two hikes. So this is three in 2023 and four in 2024, right? So this is where they have like all the dots and stuff like that. But if you're looking more specifically here, they're only looking for, you know, 1%. So this is end of 2022, 1% here. 2% by the end of next year and 3% by the end of 2024, that is not going to be at a quick enough pace. It's just not going to be at a quick enough pace for us. So, you know, when I look at that, it's that's where I see uh, the Fed getting much more aggressive. And I could be wrong on that. Maybe you're right. Maybe it's only two, but they don't have that luxury of, of trying to control the markets and try to, I mean, they have to control inflation. Inflation is the biggest threat. Well, they need to. Absolutely. Um, we'll just see how they do that. Again, maybe, maybe in one of the rate hikes, they do it by a higher amount. Um, a higher percentage, maybe maybe they signal that they're going to raise more. I just uh, we'll just have to see how the market reacts to that. I just think if you see a quick pull, if you get a twenty percent pullback or quote unquote the bear market, I think they would uh, at least try to soften the blow. Um, that's my opinion on it. So we'll see how they navigate around that. Uh, I think that's going to give a lot of. I think certain sectors are going to do well during inflationary times, like we've seen in the past. Again, you just can't look at past because things are different this time in a lot of senses. Uh, but I know we're both bullish on energy, Frank. Um, but yeah, I, what would be nice here is that this year, as you've talked about yesterday, you basically have a handful of stocks carrying these indexes and making it, you know, everything's up 20 some percent when a lot of individual stocks are getting hit. It'd be great to see the indexes say flat to down five to 10% next year, uh, because of some of that rotation out of the biggest stocks doesn't mean they're going to crash, but also to see a lot more individual stocks and portfolios do well for the individual investor. So it'll be a wild ride, but that's all right. We're, we're, we're prepared, Frank. Yeah, I know. And they're showing the meme stocks right now on CNBC where, where you're seeing, you know, just you know, AMC was at 60, it's 23, GameStop is three, whatever, and it's, you know, 140 something. I mean, you know, just massive moves in a lot of these names. I agree with you. I will say this, though, which I mentioned yesterday, there is a pretty wide gap between what, you know, when you're looking at the firms. For example, yeah, I'm talking about forecasts of 2022, the SP 500. For example, when you're looking at, uh, a specific stock, especially a large cap stock, and you have like you know twenty analysts, thirty analysts on it. That target price is usually, you know, you, you'll see some guys get like twenty percent, thirty percent higher, and others, you know, outside of maybe one or two crazies, which maybe be small firms, you know, maybe it'll, it'll be down, you know, twenty percent and ten percent. But they're usually pretty tight on a stock when it comes to the overall S and P five hundred. It's usually like four or five percent upside, maybe seven percent upside, and that's you know not including the last year. Or two after the pandemic, because we saw a massive decline followed by, you know, all this money injected to the system. But normally, historically, it's usually pretty tight three, four, five, six percent gains, maybe two, three percent of the downside. And we have 10% upside for Goldman Sachs. Morgan Stanley's particular five percent uh, downside. I think it is Stifle, also, you know, well known sell side firm, very respected. Uh, they're also seeing uh, they see 10% downside. So you're looking at that volatility, it's pretty crazy, right? It just tells you what they're thinking and how. Yeah, this market, you know, people are just like, there's going to be lots of uncertainty. You're going to see inflation run wild. The Fed's doing something it hasn't done in a very long time. They just did it briefly in 2016 through 2018, quickly reversed that, especially as the market started getting hit. And then we had COVID. They brought it back to zero again. So we're talking outside 16, 17, a little bit into 18. You know, almost a 12-year period where it's zero. These things are going to go much, much higher. And there's a big difference, Daniel, between playing a 3% mortgage or 5% mortgage, like I said yesterday. I mean, when rates go higher, you're going to see a different landscape. You're not going to see all these projects get funded, $30, $40 billion, like nothing. All these crazy SPACs come out and the demand. A lot of that is going to slow down. And, you know, we'll see. I'm hoping I'm wrong and inflation doesn't go wild. But right now, I just don't, you know, I don't see it's a case. Yeah, that's easy. That's an easy argument to make that that's the that's the path of least resistance right there and it is i mean inflation everybody needs to prepare for that and i think that's what the market's doing right now uh, ahead of the ahead of the fed meeting and uh, looking into next year so you don't sound very uh, you sound more like a grinch than uh, a jolly guy right now frank i know you're not <laughs> sounding the alarm button but got to have some fun for you you know not fun a gr- you. <laughs> you know it's funny cuz a little bit of a grinch but here's here's what worries me right now we see a massive inflation and that's okay Right, we're seeing you know high yield default rates at all time lows. Right, people debt is never concerned. What's a concern is if they're paying it, everyone's paying off their debt. However, that's because our government has been handing checks directly to people, and that's stopping. So that's going to stop now. So now you're not going to see that money handed directly to people. So now you're going to pay these rising prices, which people didn't care, and they didn't care for like the last nine months. And you know, want proof of that? They went out spending like crazy. Look at Black Friday sales. And this is the first year I can remember when they were flat year over year because everybody was spending like crazy before. Now you're not handing out checks as much. 
you know, companies who, who don't have pricing power will be cutting back. You'll probably see the unemployment rates not going higher. And you know, people aren't going to spend like crazy, especially at these prices. I mean, how much could they could they spend on gasoline? It, it, eventually, you know, when you're looking at the market and all these things that existed, which is a perfect environment, and you're taking away that Kool-Aid, that's what has me worried. And, and again, I hope I'm wrong on this. I hope stocks go up. I know most people are long, but this is a time I think you really need to protect yourself now that there, there is a fundamental change in the marketplace. Now, I want to change subjects here and go over crypto, which has been extremely volatile. Uh, chief executives of six cryptocurrencies, they testified uh, uh, Wednesday for the House Financial Services Committee. This was uh, the CEO of Circle, CEO of FTX, Bitfury, Paxos, uh, Coinbase, and even the CFO of Coinbase, and then uh, of Stella, uh, the CEO of Stella. So, you know, they weren't all CEOs, just to make sure. They were all CEOs, but they also have the CFO of Coinbase. I don't yeah. know, uh, Coinbase, well, I think Lisa has the CEO uh, and, and CFO of Coinbase, which yeah. is kind of weird, CEO and CFO of a company that big. But anyway, I thought it was just CFO of somebody different. So you look at the top executives, right, and all of them uh, testifying. And I kind of like this because I feel like the government is at least trying to understand this. Uh, and if you listen to that, which I know you did, uh, you highlighted like a lot of cool things, right? I mean, there was a lot of really good stuff that said in that in, in that the testimony. Yeah, I commented on this uh, quickly last week because it was going on when I was doing the one of the Wall Street unplugs for you, Frank. And there was a little bit of grandstanding by both political sides, which is understandable. But I would encourage everybody. You can Google this. Uh, the links were free on, uh, or the replays were on YouTube. I'm sure. I'm sure the House Committee or whatever has those as well. But uh, the way these work is you have kind of an intro and then each representative from those six uh, crypto firms you, you named get a five minute opening statement. And then uh, each member of, of the committee gets five, five minutes to uh, go back and forth and ask questions to whoever they like. I would tell everybody, if you have some time, go search for that uh, review and listen to the opening statements. You can listen to it, you know, pick up the speed and stuff. But what I thought were, I'll, I'll hit on a couple of these things, Frank. Uh, the highlights were underbanked. Users versus CEOs and disruption. The political grandstanding was like, hey, we don't want to undermine the U.S. dollar. What's keeping from, you know, they named uh, Meta, formerly known as Facebook, about, hey, if they let if they get this crypto uh, stable coin and these wallets, if people go there versus the U.S. dollar, that's going to be bad for us. Um, these executives were just you want to talk about some intelligent people building some exciting, neat stuff. Forget the price of cryptos right now. Uh, listen to their opening statements and what they're talking about, because if you don't walk away from this, and again, I am not the permable, but I am very bullish on the crypto space in general because of the innovation, money, and people flocking to that industry. And what you'll hear from these executives is they're already talking about all they want is regulatory clarity here in the U.S. So it's not your uh, one side is, hey, we don't want any oversight, any rules. We want to be every man for themselves, mm -hmm. they are basically saying, hey, just like big banks in the United States, your Goldman's, Morgan Stanley's, Bank of America, just like they deal with regulation because they know what that regulation is, just tell us what it is for us and let us let, let, let us work. Let us into the banking system. Um, but the underbanked, they talked about an NPR from, uh, is it April of this year? Have over 60, yeah, April of 2021, this was out. And NPR is talking about the underbanked. There's over 60 million Americans that are underbanked or don't have a bank, Frank. That means that they don't use credit debit cards as easily as you and I. They don't apply for credit. Uh, they don't even use banks to cash checks in many cases. Why? Because they may not have a lot. And then what? Fees and loopholes that you have to jump through to get accounts. So these guys are talking about a global system. Um, they've already... They, Frank, you ought to hear the exchanges. Now, these six companies, Coinbase's exchange, FTX's exchange, uh, Circle is a stable coin. Um, F, uh, Paxos is a uh, basically a banking platform and, and transfer platform. You ought to hear them list the regulations they're licensed with and dealing with all over the globe. So if you go into this thinking, oh, these guys are just shooting from their hip, they're not. It, it's amazing to see some of the smartest people in the room. And to our credit on the House Service Committee, there was actually a few decent questions in there about how to build this out. What would you like if you were in our shoes? And they just want clarity. And that that there's no way you don't come away very bullish, in my opinion, from that. Yesterday, I said, you know, you, you need to understand crypto. It's a $2 trillion market now. Institutions are late to the part. They're just getting in. This is just the beginning. I think, you know, you have decades and decades where the most innovation is going to come from. 
I said, start doing your research, take it. If you're going to do your research, listen to what some of these people said, okay? And it's important because what's wrong with this industry is that it's very difficult to understand for the average person. And, you know, proof of stake, proof of work, all, you know, the technology behind them and, you know, the use of, of these utility tokens. And, and you know, they don't do a good job of it because, you know, look, they're not marketing firms, right? So, so these guys did a great job of breaking it down and understanding who their audience was. They understand that we have Gary Gensler, the chairman of the SEC, who said that many cryptos and these tokens, they fall under agency's purview and should be registered as securities, right? If they are, that changes the, the whole landscape of the entire industry. These guys got to have to report financials, everything, and, and that could really you know, crush some of these names because they're going to have to come off Coinbase. They're going to have to come off all the U.S. exchanches and only be on, on the Binances and things like that and out there and, and international exchanges if they do that. So they're trying to say, okay, hey, let's sit down and talk about this and we're going to tell you why. And the, the descriptions and why this is so massive it was done so well. So if you have not really looked at crypto or you just want to start learning about it, go there and listen to some of these things. They're on YouTube. They're on TikTok. There's little snippets. You don't have to watch the whole, I think it was five hours of testimony, whatever. Yeah, damn They're going to have the best parts. But man, it was really done well with like, okay, we need to break this down simple. This way they understand that, listen, there's a lot of great companies. Innovation is going to come here. Yes, you need a little bit of regulation on top of it, which I think they're all, you know, believe, right? Because you're seeing still a lot of shady shit in this industry. But it, it was really fantastic. And I thought that was a big deal for crypto. Again, something that we're big believers in, but I don't know. And I said this, I've been saying this for the last year as we went up. Tremendously this year, six six thousand, and now we're below fifty. Uh, I don't know what, where it, you know Bitcoin's going to be in the next three months or six months. I know three years, four years, five years, ten years. Uh, it's you're going to see much much more adoption. It's going to go a lot higher, and you're going to see a lot of the biggest trends in technology develop. And that's why you need to be in this industry because someone that follows these trends goes to an electronic show every single year. I've never seen this much innovation since the 1990s. Uh, and the internet and everybody just finding out, you know, what's the best ways to play this? Remember, Amazon was like, oh, we could sell books, right? That was the original plan for Amazon. And look look where they are now. Uh, Netflix, too, when it came to, you know, just, you know, using the mail, right? To, to, to send their DVDs through the mail. And then they're like, well, we could stream this thing. It's, just, it's amazing to see all the innovation that came. But now when you're looking at, at, at crypto, this is where the innovation is. It's that exciting and, you know. It's one of the places where you could see enormous, enormous returns, returns that you really can't get in the stock market anymore, which is evident just by looking at a crypto intelligence portfolio. So really exciting stuff, Daniel. Let's go over, because I know we wanted to talk about, uh, and, uh, you know, Pfizer, COVID-19, that their new pill, near 90% effective, uh, you know, which was news. And you're seeing a little bit of a rebound in, in these companies as well, but- you know, look, that's another risk to the marketplace, right, going forward, and, and which provides uncertainty, because I think we're going to see these new variants come up every single year, just similar to like the flu, right, new flu shot and stuff like that. We're going to see it every year. And when we do, that creates uncertainty, just like we saw with Omicron, which hurt the market. So, you know, it's good that we're seeing more news. It's good that we're seeing it in a pill form. But, you know, I mean, your thoughts on this, because uh, I think this is a big deal. I mean, the more certainty we could provide around COVID and people feel safe, the better it is, because I think people are really getting annoyed about wearing masks now. They feel protected. They feel okay. And Omicron, they're not really getting impacted, getting really sick from it. So, Yeah. It, so far, the news is good from that perspective on... Now, I, don't, I didn't see when this pill is supposed to be uh, in circulation or all that kind of thing, but it is good news. It's just, it's a wait and see thing because you have uh, the UK and, and uh, Johnson over there saying that, you know, they're expecting a huge tidal wave. So, uh, I think Hong Kong, I saw this morning or yesterday that uh, Hong Kong is making people from the U.S. quarantine over there uh, because there was one case or very few. Mm -hmm. uh, I think there's been very few deaths from this, which is good. I'm not saying any deaths are okay. Uh, but yeah, we as investors, you just have to prepare for this. I mean, this is a yearly thing. Uh, we're up to, I think Pfizer is recommending four booster shots now. Uh, Fauci said to just <laughs> deal with it if you have to take more. Um yeah. So, hey, have, have some exposure to that to get back at them. Uh, but unfortunately, the, the worriness is, I think I think the market is pricing in longer term, it's going to be okay, but the short term volatility, because if you get these lockdowns or partial lockdowns, that's only going to connect, continue to affect supply chain disruptions and just these tedious issues during the worst of times when you have inflation really kicking into gear. So, yeah, it, unfortunately, this is the new normal that you just have to learn to live with and uh, expect these volatility and these headlines. Yeah, and a big thing with this pill too, they said that you can give it to to someone like three to five days after they're confirmed that they they have the infection, right? So, 
uh, which I thought was a big deal. So, so you know, the fact that you could take it, you know, when you know is a big, it's a huge deal because I've covered healthcare forever. And whenever you have treatments or anti-aging or if you do this with DNA and you look at DNA uh, and genes, uh, you know, you could see what uh, diseases you're subject to based on, you know, your DNA code and, and you know, again, going back, uh, you know, through, uh, you know, history. So, but when you take, People don't like taking medicine that prevents them from, you know, otherwise we would have a high obesity rate, right? If you, because everybody knows you got to eat better and you're good, right? You feel good. So, but when you're sick and you need to take something and you want to get rid of that pain, that's when you see massive, massive adoption. So I thought this is a big deal. Uh, and we'll see, right? The bottom line is we, you know, we want to lower this risk somehow. Uh, you know, Florida has been open for a long time. We've been very, very fortunate. We have the lowest rates, I think, of any state for, for infections. Uh, and you know, I, I just wish that a lot of states uh, did it the same way because you know economies have done well, people have done well. We protected the right people. Again, not saying that you know some people over the top of vaccination. You should get vaccinated. No, there's a specific part of the population that's over six years old that needs to get vaccinated if you have underlying conditions, right? So uh, hopefully this uh, you know this helps in that risk. But again, I think we're still going to see this come up more and more, Daniel, as time goes on. But. Yeah, it's forever. It's not It's not going away. So unfortunately, that's just the way, that's the world we live in, Frank. All right. So let's end on this. Let's get some of your predictions. Again, we're going to have a podcast next week. The following week, we're going to have off. But, you know, what is your projection? You know, if you're thinking not as many rate hikes, I guess you're suggesting that, you know, inflation is not going to run wild. So, you know, would that be good for stocks? Are you looking at gold? Are you looking at Bitcoin? What are some of the things that you like, Daniel, going into next year? Uh, uh, and even names, if you want to share them. Well, I do. I have one uh, EQT, and this is the energy play. Mm -hmm. And I, this is just recent. I was watching. I actually had CNBC on, and they had the uh, CEO of EQT, um, who is Toby Rice. And you, you mentioned the other day about energy companies. Uh, you were talking more oil, but we can paint with a broad brush here. They've. It's not the old energy companies where they're burning through cash like crazy. They're focused on rewarding shareholders and kind of uh, that's more steady growth and longer term thinking. So Elizabeth Warren, Senator Elizabeth Warren, fired off a industry kind of letter to uh, oil and natural gas uh, producers about basically the higher prices are because of companies just gouging consumers, not supply demand, not anything else. So I thought it was pretty impressive. Uh EQT led the kind of way with a re reply. And I'm going to give you this stat, Frank. Uh, here's a couple bullet points from their reply and letter. And then I'll tell you one other thing why, why I'm bullish on the company and, and going to put it on the radar. So from the shale gas boom between 2005 and 2019, he claims the United States led the way in emission reductions. And this is a quote. He says, the emission reduction from coal to gas switching seen in the United States between 2005 and 2019 is equivalent of actually electrifying about 190 million cars. Okay? Mm -hmm. Well, put that in context. So 190 million cars basically being electrified is important because <laughs> do you know what the actual, what do you think the EV cars projected global sales are in 2030, Frank? So we're in 2020, 2021 I now. I would have no idea, but I think it's... It, about 20, 31 they're, million. All right, they're projecting it should it should be about... I think 3% of overall sales. This is a great stat because this is just kind of shining light on something because I would have never guessed this. So, hey, you basically have already electrified 190 million cars. That's the that's the mm -hmm. use we're, we're giving you. Okay, that's good. They're projecting in 2030 that global sales will be 31 million. So that's incredible. That ought to be celebrated. I think everybody will be like, hey, that's a good job. You're reducing this. Everybody's for reducing emissions. Mm -hmm. uh, cleaner is better as long as it's affordable because nothing is free and you got to mm -hmm. you got to balance that price and things. So EQT, I thought, did a great job on that or at least trying to highlight that. They're the leader, leading natural gas producer in North America. And yesterday, I believe, they just announced uh, they're reinstating their dividend, which is only going to be about 2.5%, but that's good in a 0% world, even though those are beginning to go up. And they actually did a billion-dollar buyback, okay? So if you – and again, uh, that's why you pay and listen to us, but everybody could go to their website and look at their news release. But this really stood out to me, Frank. Check this out. He says uh, – this is Toby Rice, CEO, talking – and he says, with a premier asset base projected to generate approximately $5.6 in available cash through 2023, we, and then he gives another great stat, but I won't bore you with numbers, we have ample flexibility to achieve both our debt reduction and execute capital return initiatives at any price environment. 
any price environment, Frank. What does that mean? That means he's not worried about natural gas prices falling from the recent peaks. Mm. That means he's not worried about... Now, they're all cheerleaders. CEOs are optimistic people. That's a good thing. But when you have the moves that have been made to shore up the balance sheet, they're very transparent in what they're targeting as far as leverage goes, uh, dividends, buybacks, and being able to basically give you a base off of a $3 natural gas price when it's 370, I think, give or take right now, 350, mm-hmm. 370, even on the low end. Uh, that's the kind of stuff you want to see from management when you're investing. And when there's a lot of turbulence in the markets, inflation is going to c- continue across the board. That's in energy prices. And this is a very top tier uh, producer. And it's trading, I think, a little under 52 week high. So it's not it's not massively run up. You haven't missed this. So that that's your pick. That is your number one pick. So you're looking at. at I don't know about number one pick. I'll, I'll think EQT, about that. But that's think... that's a good pick for me. I like that. <laughs> yeah, well, Galaxy you... Digital is probably my number one pick. But I'm biased on that. I keep buying a little bit of that damn near every month. So EQ, so Daniel said it's guaranteed to go up 100 percent over the next few months. Just to let you know. If not, you say you're going to do a, a, a personal golf lesson live on TikTok for everyone if you're wrong. Right? Sure. That's what I heard. That, yeah, that's an easy one. That's oh, what yeah. I heard. All right, cool. That's, That's what I heard. <laughs> so uh, for me, I think, you know, my, one of my picks that I really, really like, and I've recommended this newsletters, but, it's, you know, we're doing okay with it, so I'm going to give it away. Uh, I really like Alcoa here. I mean, Alcoa, man, I mean, they had an unbelievable quarter. Uh, you're looking at all the numbers, are absolutely fantastic. It seems strong, super, super strong demand. It is kind of, a, you know, with, with aluminum, it, it is, you know, an environmental play, right? So... Fits the ESG thing. Uh, they just announced they're going to join the the mid cap four hundred, which is, uh, you know, pushing the stock higher. And you know, just when you're looking at the numbers and what this company is doing, it, it's it's pretty incredible. I mean, they're increasing their uh, their buyback now. Just the numbers are very very strong. This is a new company. It's only about seven percent off its highs, eight percent off its highs. I just think it's a it's a screaming buy here. <laughs> um, and it's a name that I think that is going to have a fantastic fantastic year going forward. But uh, yeah, that's one of the names I really, really like. So, you know, when I look at that that buyback, um, it was $150 million that was remaining under their last authorization. Uh, they announced uh, another $500 million share buyback. So, you know, numbers are really, really good. They achieved all the goals. They checked off all the boxes. I just feel like this is a name that hasn't really participated. Uh, and I think, uh, you know, really, really strong to the upside. But that's one of the names that I like right now and one of the names that I'm giving away. So... Dan, I want to thank you for coming on. We covered a lot today. I love shouting, giving you guys out ideas. Uh, that's what we do. Uh, questions, comments, feel free to email me at frankcurziorresearch.com or Daniel, which your Daniel is, which email address? Daniel at curziorresearch.com. Thank you. Perfect. All right, guys. Great interview coming up for you tomorrow. One of the heads, uh, one of the top people at, at, at T0, which we're going to be listening to our token. Uh, so it's going to be a lot of fun tomorrow. So definitely tune in. That's it for me. Really, really appreciate all the support. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Take care.